sometimes we commit for the wrong reason. We fall in love. We delude ourselves. We say we're in love with someone when really it has nothing to do with love for them. It has more to do with relationship contingent self-esteem. When you have low self-esteem, so low that you feel unworthy unless you're in a relationship, you'll see that happen, show up in serial daters, in people who only date for a short time and then they let go, or people who end up with partners that other friends will say, what are they doing with them? Like it's obvious to everybody else that this partner isn't good for you or doesn't treat you well. But because you're so worried about being alone or being without someone because so much of your self-esteem is riding on whether you have a relationship, it can cause a lot of problems. So I want to talk a little bit about what we call RCSE, and that's Relationship Contingent Self-Esteem. I want to talk about how it shows up in your relationship. And the first way it will show up is you're more obsessive with the other person. Like basically, you're preoccupied with the relationship. All you think about is a relationship. All you talk about is a relationship. Other areas in your life are dim in comparison. Like you don't spend any time in them. You don't spend time doing what you used to do because so much of your effort and obsessive thoughts and compulsive thoughts are based on the relationship. Secondly, you get really sensitive to anything negative or not. You'll make something negative that isn't something your partner says. And the reason is it's driven by your fear, your fear of abandonment, your fear of alone, your fear of losing that relationship and thus having a void in your self-esteem. Um, it can lead you into getting into this like where you're totally defensive all the time. No matter what your partner says, they want to work on something. They see a weakness and they want to make it stronger. Whatever it is, you will defend it because you're defending your fear. And that's basically what, what it comes down to, although you'll never say that and you may not even be aware of it. It also pairs with jealousy. People who are more jealous usually have more of their self-esteem tied up into the relationship. Remember, when you're with someone, you are, you're a whole person. It's just that you're joining another person. But if you join someone as half a person because you need that relationship for your self-esteem or to validate that you're okay, then you're going to be more jealous when you notice anybody around that person. It can damage your, your ability to do anything separate. Like, let's say you want to take a trip with the girlfriends or your job says you're going to go for a week retreat away from your partner. It can really make it scary. And you may be reluctant to go. And the reason you're reluctant to go is you can't have 24-7 visual on this partner and make sure that that relationship is secure and that that partner won't abandon you. Or lastly, it can cause problems with your wants or your needs. You may just suck up whatever's going on wrong. If your partner disrespects you, if your partner's not treating you right, you may just suck it up and go, oh, you know, that's just the way they are. Because you don't want, you don't want to lose them. You don't want to be alone. You're so fearful of being without a relationship that you'll stay with someone who is not good for you. We have a lot of ideas why this happens. Like, does it happen in childhood? Most likely. Or, you know, how do, you, how do certain people get this? Well, there's three basic needs that people need that with relationship contingent self-esteem people, they don't get these needs met. And the first is autonomy. That sense, that feeling like you can direct and control your own reactions and your own behavior. So they don't have that developed well. Secondly, their competence. They feel, they really don't feel effective at what they do or they feel like they're going to fail. Many times when parents raise children and they praise them for everything, they're actually making that child grow up into an adult that feels incompetent. Because that kid somewhere, when they're getting praised, knows they don't really deserve it. But because the parent is so full of praise, the child gets seduced into that. 
And so the first time they really act in the new world, they realize, hey, I'm not, I'm not capable. I can't really do this. I don't have anybody praising me. And it can cause a lot of problems and doubts for them. Lastly, their, re their sense of relatedness, like it, it screwed up with the attachment theories. If they grew up in a neglectful home or a family that had a lot of chaos or abuse, or they cursed a lot and they weren't able, like if you were angry, your parents just wouldn't listen to that or said, I'll give you something to be angry about. You were never allowed to say, I'm hurt. My feelings are hurt. I'm angry. I'm mad. These kinds of families make that really difficult to feel like you have control, like what you feel is validated. If you don't have that need met, then when you get into a relationship, you can see why your, why your self-esteem would be dependent upon that. Um, you can get healthy from this. I think what's important is that you do seek therapy because a therapist can really help strengthen you with that. But before you go to therapy, ask yourself these questions. And when you make notes or you journal about them, this is going to help you go into therapy with your eyes wide open. And that therapist is going to know how better to help you. Um, ask, just ask yourself these. If your relationship suddenly ended, how would it affect you? How would you feel about yourself? Secondly, do you feel less significant when you are between relationships? Less significant, another way to say that is, do you feel less worthy when you're in between relationships? Is your radar always up for signs of rejection? Do you, do you look for ways that people reject you? Not just potential dates, but all people. Is there any trouble in your relationship that it does not, if there's any trouble in your relationship, does it negate or make negative all the sources of joy in your life? So when something is going badly in your relationship, can you still find joy in other things? Or is it more when you, something's going badly in your relationship, Everything in life is clouded with it. Is it that significant? That's a sign that shows up with many of my clients and I make special reference to that. And lastly, do you feel as though you can never get enough reassurance and closeness from your partner? Now, I wanna caution you with this. Many people who have a low self-esteem or the relationship their self-esteem is contingent on the relationship, end up with bad partners. And by bad partners, I mean people who are, you know, have problems with intimacy, people who are aloof, people who feel distant. So if you're married to that type of person or you're with that type of person, it would be natural for anyone who was anxious about a relationship, which most people are if their self-esteem is contingent on the relationship, they would want more. And that would be normal. That doesn't necessarily mean that, you're, that you have this issue where your self-esteem is dependent on the relationship. It more means that it could be a boundary issue. It could be that an insecure attacher attached to an avoidant attacher. And when that happens, you'll get that same scenario. So that's more than you need to know, but just a caution because I am a psychotherapist and I don't want to mislead you. I hope this helps you.